Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to talk about construction of two sets called the first and the follow sets. Now, why do we need these two sets? Now, in constructing our LL1 parser, we have seen that we need to have a table, parsing table, which has to be con constructed so that we can decide which production is to be used. So, in order to do that, we have to look at a particular non-terminal symbol, which is at the top of the stack. And we have to look at the input symbol that is coming next. And then, based on this, we have to make a decision. So, to do this, we need to have two sets, that is the first set and the follow set for a given grammar. So, the first set, the set first, this is basically, it is the set of all terminals that are the first symbols in the strings derived from a particular uh, a string. So, when I say first of, say, first of alpha, where alpha is a string of terminals or non-terminals, then this set, the first set would of alpha would indicate the set of all terminals that would be the beginning of all strings that is derived from alpha. Say for example, if I have, if I write first of uh, say A capital A B, we are using the same uh, notation, small letters denotes terminals and capital letters denotes non-terminals. So, here alpha is our small a capital A B. So, first of this would be all strings that is derived from A A B would start with the terminal A. So, the first set of this would be A. On the other hand, if I say first of, first of say A B of the string A B, in that case, I have to find out uh, what would be the strings would, which would be derived from the non-terminal A. Then only I can derive first of AB. So, we will see how this first set can be constructed. So, the first thing that we, will, uh, we have is that first we will take all productions in a grammar and if the first rule is we will check for productions of the form alpha. A derives epsilon. Okay. So, if there is a production of this type, then the first set of A will contain, will it will contain epsilon. Then next, if there is a production of the form a derives a alpha where a is a non term a is a terminal symbol small a is a terminal symbol and capital a is a non terminal then first of a will contain that particular terminal symbol and alpha here can be again another any string of terminals and non terminals the third rule is that if i have a production like this a derives uh, a1, A2, okay, An, where A1, A2, An are all non-terminals, then uh, to find first of A, the first of A, we will first look at first of A1, okay. So, if first of A1 does not contain epsilon, that is, if first of A1 does not contain uh, epsilon, okay, then first of A would be equal to first of A1. So, now this uh, particular production A derives epsilon, if there is a, if there is a production like this from A, then we say that this non-terminal A is nullable. Let me just write it down here. We say that 
A is this is a null nullable. So the term in non-terminal A is nullable. So here, if we look at this production, A derives A one, A two up to A n. If A one is nullable, is not nullable, then first of A would be equal to first of A one. But but if A is nullable. A one is nullable if A one is nullable. That means there is a production of this type. A one derives epsilon. In that case, first of A one or first of A would be first of A would be first of a one without epsilon, okay, union, union first of a two, a three up to a n. That means first of the remaining. So let me just repeat this again. If there is a production. Of the type A derives A one A two up to A n, okay. Then to find first of A, we first take the first non-terminal A one, and see if it is nullable or not. If it is not nullable, then the first of A is equal to the first of first of A is equal to first of A one. But if A is nullable, means A can be replaced by epsilon, then I get. I will get something like this if a derives a one a two up to a n. Okay. Now, if a one derives epsilon, if a one is nullable, then a one can be re can be replaced by epsilon, and we will be left with the remaining part. So, in that case, first of a would be again first of a two a three up to a n, and you can continue in this manner. Again, we will check if a two is nullable. If a two is not nullable, then first of a would be first of uh, first of a two. Again, if a is a two is nullable, if a two can go away, then we take a three first of a three a four up to a n, and continue in this manner. So this is the algorithm. These are the steps that we are going to follow. This would be more clear if we take an example. So let me take a simple example here. A, our expression grammar, E derives T E dash E dash derives plus T E dash or epsilon T derives F T dash T dash derives star. F T dash or epsilon and F derives E or I D. So here, let us find out the first sets of all the non-terminals. So let me write down the non-terminals here: E, E dash, T, T dash, and F. Okay. So let us start with. The first, initially everything is empty. All the sets are empty. Let me start with F. So, for this we have two production. F derives this, and F derives I D. So here, ah, uh, it is this first. These two, both of these are matching with our first, ah, uh, with our second rule. That was with our second rule. That is something like this. A derives A alpha. So here, first of F would be so uh, any string deriving from F will either start with a parenthesis here, so first will be parenthesis, or it will start with I D. So I D. So this is first of F. Let us look at T dash now. So t dash. This is the production for t dash. 
okay so again if we see our first production first rule if there is a production rule a derives alpha uh, epsilon then first of a contains epsilon so here we have t dash defined derives epsilon so epsilon comes in first of t dash then we also have t dash derives star f t dash so it starts with this again matches our second rule that is a alpha if this is a and this is alpha so star belongs to t dash now uh, the third that is terminal that is a non terminal that is t let's look at t so for t we have this production t derives f t dash now this does not match our first rule or our second rule it matches our third rule what was the third rule a derives a1 a2 up to an so here i have two two non terminals t derives f t dash so first we'll see if f is nullable or not is f nullable f is not nullable so because f does there is no production like this this there is no production like this so f is not nullable so first of t would be first of f so first of f is parenthesis id so parenthesis and id okay so this is for the t production next let us look at for the next production which is e dash the productions for e dash so e dash we have two productions e dash derives plus t e dash and e dash derives epsilon so from from here epsilon is in first of e dash and from here plus is in first of e dash okay this is from rule number 1 this is from rule number 2 okay now we are left with e so e first of e first of e would be e there is one production only t e dash so t e dash so what is in first of t first of t would be is t nullable first of all t is not nullable t does not have epsilon here t does not have epsilon so t is not nullable so first of e would be first of t so first of t is parenthesis id so first of e would be parenthesis id so these are our first sets for this particular grammar let us look at another grammar s s derives small a b d h b derives small c capital c capital c derives b capital c or epsilon d derives e f e derives g epsilon and f derives f epsilon so again let us write down the name of the symbols that is the terminals non terminals s b c d e and f and let us construct the the sets first sets so again we start from the bottom here so for f we have two production f derives f small f so f will appear in first and f derives epsilon so epsilon also appears here so for f derives epsilon so epsilon enters into the first this is because of rule number 1 and f derives small f here because of rule number 2 small f enters the first of f then coming similarly for e also we have uh, g enters here and epsilon enters here 
Uh, what about D? D starts with E. Now, is E nullable? Yes, E is nullable. Okay, so what we will do? We will take the first of G without epsilon and put it in first of D. So, G will enter into first of D. Why? Because E was nullable. E derives epsilon. First of E contains epsilon. So, without the epsilon, we will take the first of E and put it in first of D. Then, if E is nullable, then if E goes away, E is removed and we are left with F. We are left with D derives F. In that case, first of F will be in first of D. So, what is in first of F? F epsilon. So, we will put F epsilon. Now, if F is also nullable, F is also nullable, it contains first of F, uh, it contains uh, epsilon. So, if F is also nullable, I will be left with E can also vanish, F can also vanish. So, I will be left with this. D derives epsilon. So, from rule number 1, epsilon enters into first of D. Next, we will see for the terminal C. For C, we find uh, C derives epsilon is there. So, epsilon appears here. And C derives BC is there. So, B enters here from rule number 2. For uh, capital B, I have only it, B, uh, C and capital C. So, it starts with C. It starts with C. And for S, now I have S starts with A. It's a, according to rule number 2. So, starts with A. So, these are the first sets of uh, this particular grammar.